Like I said, we're going into ground where very few have ever tread before. The modern idea is just preach the love of Jesus and evangelism and forget all the rest about the Bible. But the rest of the Bible is what takes you and keeps you in God's Word, what keeps your children from becoming atheists and agnostics and all of this. There are a great many Catholics that have become agnostics. Do you know why? The same thing of the idea of mindset that is in Baptist churches today. Don't study anything out there. Don't study the languages. Don't study any of this stuff. All it'll do is confuse you. This preach Jesus and that's all. And the love of God. Now those things are extremely important, aren't they? Jesus, preaching Jesus and love of God. Have you ever heard me preach a sermon where I didn't try to get somebody to be saved? <clears throat> I always preach about the, the grace of God and I preach about the, the wonderful plan of salvation. But the rest of this stuff is what keeps you in God's word and what gives you a foundation to stand on through the hardest times in your life and that's one of the things that I wanted to do in Fish Lake Valley. If I go up there, I want to have seminars, little, maybe a week-long seminar or a weekend, uh, four, four days or something like that, and go into stuff like this. And I think because of the beauty of the place, it will draw them there just to see the place. But, boy, I'm going to pour it on them. And I will get others that pour it on them, like you, Brother Ray, with church history and things that you know and, and what you've learned from me. How much have you learned in the last nine months? Yeah. And uh, which I've been through before, but there was so much added to it. Man, I said, man, maybe I don't blow my brains out, but there was a lot more. You, you learn. But if you have little mini seminars like this, where you get people in, missionaries maybe, there are people that, like I said, Catholics, many Catholics become agnostics. Why do they become agnostics? From the same mindset that we have in churches today. What is that mindset? Come into church, take your head off and your brain and leave it outside and just come in and just sit there. Don't think. I try to make people think when they come in my classroom. That's, a, that's what I really tried. Brother Bogard used to say, think. It's a good trick if you can do it. And today people don't want to think. We have media. Of course, my classes are on media. They're going all over the world. I'm preaching up there on Sunday morning and Wednesday night in Tehachapi, as Brother Ray will say. Well, that's what you're watching. I'm doing that in New York and Australia and China and Japan, the Philippines, all over. We're doing these classes for all of that. The reason for it is to keep people in the Word of God all of their life. People become agnostic because they're Catholics because... All they learn in Catholicism is respect and fear of God. Amen. That's all. That's to put the fear in them. Don't think is, uh, look up here in the map, is, is Satan an image, work, image worship? They do that. Is that anti-Bible? Is that anti-God? Yes, it is. So don't read the Bible. All that's coming out of Catholicism is Mariolatry. Are you worshiping a woman, a person, the mother of God? Mary, any woman could have had that child because a woman cannot pass on the sin nature. But God picked her because she was the right lineage and everything. It wasn't because of her holiness. The Catholic Church had an evolution of how that they took her and elevated her more and more and more and more and more and more. Now you don't pray to Jesus. You don't pray to the Father. You pray to Mary. That's perversion. <clears throat> now, when you go out and you go to college and you learn these things, go to high school and even grade school as they teach evolution and things today, and you see the Catholic dogma, don't read your Bible I want you to read your Bible. Sunday night, we talked about the prophecies, the eternal prophecies in the book of Genesis alone. It's there. These things are beautiful. Infant baptism, the church and state, infant communion, 
transubstantiation, celibacy, confession. All of these were inventions of the Catholic Church. Can you see how somebody, if they got a hold of the Bible, they'd start reading the Bible and they'd say, my church is not telling what this book says and, and this, my church is founded upon this book. No, it's not. Baptist church should be founded upon the Bible and not King James either. King James is, a, is the, the translation for the Church of England which stood against the Baptist. Baptists, so many Baptists were killed over the King James Bible that they burned them at stake in England and they killed so many of them that they ran out of firewood and they blamed on the Baptists because they had to kill them. They had to, they had to use all their firewood to execute the Baptists because burning is a horrible death. So they really wanted to make them suffer when they died. The King James Version is a tainted, intentionally misleading translation and that's what the Baptists said in 1611. That's what got them killed. Now they follow it, hook, line, and sinker, because somebody wrote a book or two on it. The Bible was written in Greek and Hebrew, wasn't it? You can't go wrong studying that, but that's work, isn't it? And people today are lazy, just lazy. I'm not saying that each and every one ought to be a Hebrew scholar, but you ought to be acquainted with it. At one time, to get a Doctor of Theology degree, you have to have five years of Greek and five years of Hebrew. To get a doctorate of Bible languages, you had to have six to eight years of Greek and Hebrew, which I did long, oh, way old more, more than that. But I saw the need, and I was told by an atheist, which was my stepfather. I was raised to be an atheist. See, that's what I was told, that there is no God. You can't know that there's a God or anything like that at all. I told him I wanted to surrender to preach, and he said, well, you better learn Greek and Hebrew because the Bible wasn't written in English, which then I began to do. And it accelerated. He, I was this dumb Indian that he didn't think could ever learn anything in depth. We see all of this. We see the evolution of theology, and we see all. The Bible is forbidden in 1229, as you see. But you see true Christians all the way down through here. Now, they fought. Christianity has fought over the doctrines of the Bible. I wrote a book called The Doctrines of the Bible when I was your pastor, Brother Way. Nearly, well, the book was in existence 40 years ago. It was there when you came in about 38 years ago. And I taught New Converts class. Why did I teach the New Converts class back then? You remember? Know what you believe. Know what you believe. But know what you believe. But if you wanted to be a Bible, stu a, a Bible teacher, guess what? You had to go through the New Converts class first, didn't you? Right. Now, it's not just a New Converts class. Now, it's called the Doctrines of the Bible. So, you'd learn who God is, what the Bible is, and what the Millennium is, what the Second Coming is, who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is, who the Father is, what the Church is, what Baptism is, what repentance is, what sanctification is, all of these things, you would understand what it is. Because how can you go out We've got Bible teachers teaching and preachers preaching that don't know the Word of God. And they're preaching, preaching lies from the pulpits because they don't know any better. But the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God. Rightly dividing the truth of God, cutting it straight that you might know what's there. And so now the things that we're going to study today are deep things. These are the things that people just, poof. How many times do you hear somebody preach on the millennium? How many sermons do you ever hear on the millennium? How many, how many sermons do you ever hear on heaven? The eternal heaven. I'm not talking about going to heaven today because they don't even know anything about that. Except you get to go to heaven, get wings, and to become an angel and all this baloney. That's what they have. We're going to talk about a little bit about the second coming, the end of the church age, a little bit about the tribulation period. We have the first coming of Christ for his church and for all the saved. Then we have a tribulation period upon the earth. For what reason, Sharon? Um, so the Jews will repent. And so the Jews will repent. And we have five out of every six people that are Gentiles killed in the world 
and then we have two out of every three Jews killed. But guess what happens? We get to save the cream of the crop. Nobody is going to go in the millennium that is not saved and is not a believer. The millennium is going to last for how long? What does milli mean? A thousand. A thousand. Kilia eter, a thousand years. Milli annum, a thousand years. It's a thousand year reign. Now, so many people today try to spiritualize away the Bible. If you're going to be a hyper-Calvinist, a super-lapsarian, an anti-lapsarian, or maybe even an infra-lapsarian, you better not study Greek and Hebrew because you're going to see volition all over the place. Yes, there is election. Yes, that we are names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world in eternity past. See, that we're talking about eternal things today. But in space and time, Jesus Christ came and died for your sins, didn't he? He stood as a lamb slain from eternity past, but in space and time he did it. And in space and time you have to believe because God made man sovereign in his sovereign image. It says in Genesis 1.26, let us make man, God said, let us make man in our shadow casting likeness, in our blood flowing likeness, shadow casting spiritual likeness, blood flowing likeness in the likeness of the pre-incarnate Christ and then in what? Our sovereign likeness. So he has volition. He has sovereignty. And he gave man sovereignty over everything. Okay? And as far as I can tell, he even gave all the... Well, that's a statement of fact. God didn't create anything evil, did he? Did he ever create anything reprobate? Because if he did, he would have created something bad which would have tainted his eternal character. God is good. God is love. How could God create reprobate and be a God of love? Because a reprobate, those that are in hell, God does not love, does he? Does he? Or does he not? He doesn't love anybody in hell. That's cut off. That's gone. It's file 13, okay? I'm sitting up here preaching at 100 degrees behind me here <laughs> with no coat on today. But there's some good stuff in here. <coughs> Revelation 19 and verse 20. We talked about 19 and verse 19, that is. We are in the 19th chapter. We have Jesus coming back riding a white horse with his church behind him on white horses. They are spectators. They have no weapons. Only Jesus has weapons. And the weapons are, what, what weapons does he use? What weapons did he use? You remember? What weapons did Jesus use? Here. His breath, his word. By God's word, the heavens were formed. The, by God's word, the eternities were laid out. The ages were laid out. The eternal ages were laid out. Here in verse 18, in order that you may... Now, he's going to have this great war. The king of kings, verse 16, and on his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, Adonai Adonaiim. In Hebrew and in Greek, it says, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried out with a loud voice, saying to all the birds which fly in mid-heaven, Come and assemble for the great supper of God. Don't ever worry about the Bible going against any, the, any uh, scientific or medical facts. What is midheaven? That's the atmosphere. Atmosphere. That's where it is. And birds fly in the atmosphere. Is that right? You know, Muhammad had the earth flat and mountains on the earth to keep it from blowing away, to hold it down like a carpet. And there's seven flat earths. And the Catholic Church had their earth flat. That's why Muhammad was believing the earth was flat, because that's what he'd heard from these Catholic fathers that were out running around in the Arabian deserts at that time. And the agnostics, that's where he got all of his material. In midheaven, in order that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of commanders and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and those who set upon them and the flesh of all men, both free and slaves and small and great. And I saw a be the beast, the beast. You know what we're talking about here. We're talking about the beast that helps the Antichrist. 
during this tribulation period. This one always took place. The, the, the Quran says that the, the Mahdi will come forth, the Mahdi Iman will come forth, and he will rule for how many years? Seven years. The Bible says the Antichrist will rule for how many years? Seven years. The Bible says that a beast will come forth and mark all of the believers of the Antichrist. The Quran says that the, the beast will come forth and mark all the true believers of Muhammad and Allah on their foreheads and on their right arms. The same thing as the Bible says, except we're talking about in the, the Quran it says that's good and the Bible says that's bad. And then the Bible says that a false Christ will come. The false, the true Christ of the Bible is going to come back and rapture all the, all the Christians and then there are people going to be saved during this period of time. All hell will break loose on earth. False religion will be rampant. One false religion that we're talking about that people called Babylon the Great for so many years, but we know how those empires set up. The sixth empire was what empire? Roman Empire. The seventh empire was what? The Ottoman Empire, which is Islamic. The eighth empire, which is the empire of the Antichrist, will be a revision of the eighth empire, or the seventh empire, which was Islam. If we take into account the Islamic prophecies, they're saying that they're the Antichrist. They're saying that they are all making all the moves of the Antichrist. That's it. At this end of this time, their Jesus is going to come back and kill all the Jews to begin with, and then he's going to kill all the Christians and break all religions, period. The, bi uh, the, the, the biased news media and strategists in the world today say that Islam is the second largest religion in the world under Christianity. But in all reality, Islam today is the largest religion in the world because what do these strategists, what do these people, what, what, what do they count as Christians? Mormons? Jehovah Witnesses? Catholics? Anglicans? All, anybody that names the name of Christ or even believes in Christ at all. Unitarians. Universalists. All these people are Christians to them. What percent of Christianity is out here today? A minuscule part of it. Evangelical Christianity. Most of evangelical, or much of evangelical Christianity, a lot of it is not really Christianity. They're just going through the moves. Now let's go on. Now this great battle of Armageddon is going to take place right here at the, the end time. That's when Jesus comes back and whoops all these bad people. If, if, it, if the Islam is right, it's going to be Islam that he's going to whoop. Except that they have, they're going to have to fight this false Christ, they say. The false Christ, they say, is, says he's the son of God. And the declaration of faith in Islam, there is no God but Allah and he has no companion. And Muhammad is his last and only prophet. That's there, and that is all anti-Christ, isn't it? Here's the Bible. Here is Islam. And what's in the Bible is good, we say. And what's in the Quran, the Hadith, and the Sunnis is good, they say. But they're absolute opposites. The Bible says that Jesus is good and he is God the Son and that he is the only way of salvation. Islam says that he is not the Son of God. There's nothing but a man born of a virgin that he had no real purpose in life, really period, that he was not a great man. And Muhammad, when he come about, he takes all of his glorious things and, and titles and applies it to himself. And he even borrows the titles of Allah and applies them to himself. Just look at this now. Here's what's going on. The lowly Jesus is not a lowly Jesus anymore, is he? He's Adonai Ha'adonaim, King of kings and Lord of lords. And the beast was seized. This is Jesus seizing the beast and these angels that are his helpers. With him the false prophet who performed the signs in the presence by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast. This is the mark of the beast. The Bible says the mark of the beast is 666, is six, six, man, man, man. The Quran said the mark of the beast. It says there is no God, all, God but Allah and he has no companion and Muhammad is his prophet. Just take that for face value. Okay? 
And those who worshipped his image, and those were thrown alive into the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone. They're alive. They have bodies that won't burn up. They're alive and the first inhabitants of hell fire. And the rest, the ones remaining, were killed with a sword. Now they get to go in Hades when they get killed. But now we have the false prophets and the beasts thrown into the lake of fire, which is the eternal abode of the damned. The first inhabitants, which came from the mouth, it says, and the rest were killed with the sword which came from the mouth of him. Remember, there's a word. This is a figure of speech. And this figure of speech here tells us one thing, that Jesus is going to destroy them with his very powerful word because he built the earth that way. Maryland, there's somebody coming up outside. It might be the air conditioner man. <coughs> He spoke it into existence. That's amazing. Yeah. Just Become. That's what I said. Become. And it became. Barashith bara Elohim eth Hashemayim we eth In one of the beginnings, he had created Elohim, the heavens and the earth. The heavens and the earth. By his word. The mouth of him who sat upon the horse and all the birds were filled with their flesh. He's going to he's going to have a garbage disposal. These birds are the garbage disposal. Verse 20 and verse 1 now. And I saw an angel coming down from heaven having the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he had laid hold of the dragon that old dracon. That dracon there, that's the panin, remember? In the Old Testament, those dragons were Moses and Aaron. When they went into Pharaoh's palace, they threw the rod down and it became a dracon, a dragon. That's God's Leviathan. And then when Janus and Bram Jambres threw their rods down, they became dragons also, not serpents, dragons. A lot different. That's the translation, the other's interpretation. And the serpent of old, who was the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Now here we have, here we have Satan bound for a thousand years, right here. Bound for a thousand years. Now Satan and all of his courts are put in jail. They're in jail. They're not going to bother anybody on the earth. Now I'm going to read a few things to you about this from God's Eternal Purpose by Alan Atkins. He quotes a lot of things. In verse number one, or chapter one, page number 127. The Lord God will give unto him the throne of his father David. Jesus has never occupied the throne. Jesus shall reign from Jerusalem. The 1,000 year reign on page 127 will be righteous reign. And then in Isaiah 11, 4, but the righteous shall be, shall he judge in righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with it equity for the meek of the earth. Isaiah 11, 4. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness and princes shall rule in judgment. Isaiah 32 and 1. It will be a time of world peace. Satan will be bound. Revelation 20 and verse 2. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares. That they're going to take all the natural resources now and they're going to take the weapons and they're going to reform the weapons. You've got recycling places, don't you? You go down here, you can recycle aluminum cans, you can recycle plastics. Well, all of this warfare equipment is going to be recycled. And now it's going to be farm equipment. It's going to go from war equipment to farm equipment. Into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks now. We've got John Deere tractors, we've got cases, we've got New Hollands, we've got all kinds of of tractors out there today, Massey Ferguson's, everything you can think of. All of the tanks and the cannons are going to be turned into this. During World War II, people went out picking up scrap metal, tin cans and everything, to, and copper and everything that you could think of. Tin, iron, and it all went into war, didn't it, in World War II. This nation set up and tooled up for war. 
And we did it. And we fought the war and we won the war. Actually, we won the battle, but we lost the victory. We, lost, we won the battle, but we lost the war because of, look at what happened now. The world cannot have peace as long as Satan is on the prowl, can it? So Peyton is, Satan is stuck in there. And, but we have problems, don't we? Mankind is still evil. I want to just read you some of his notes. Human life will be, will be lengthened. The creation shall be at peace, and the curse of the earth shall be removed. The children will be born during, during this time, and this necessity being there in natural bodies, these people are actually in their bodies. They are human beings. The women shall not labor in vain. When you have babies, you have pain. Is that right, Carol? You had about three of them, didn't you? The rule of Christ will be strict and righteous and right. Isaiah 11, 1 through 5. All the people of the earth will be required to come to Jerusalem once a year. Perhaps the nations will be represented by messengers who will go and return thanks to God for fruitful fields and unfailing seasons. Zechariah 14, 16 through 19. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations will come against Jerusalem and shall even go up from year to year to worship King and the Lord of hosts to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. For we'll have 1,000 Feasts of Tabernacles. And the Feast of Tabernacles, remember what that was for, Brother Roger, uh, brother uh, Ray? The Feast of Tabernacles? What's the Tabernacle? That's the Nauls, the dwelling place of God. God wanted to be among his people, so he said, Build me a tabernacle that I might be upon my, among my people, and the Shekinah glory will be there. And, of course, on the earth, many scholars believe that, that David will be ruling, the resurrected David, on his throne in Jerusalem. And, of course, Christ will be ruling from heaven with his bride. And some of the people from heaven will come down to earth. Some of the resurrected, glorified people will come down to earth, and they will see these. Of course, they'll see David each and every year. One of the purposes of the millennial reign on page 130 will may well be that the setting up of the government and order, this is the beginning of eternity. This is the, this is the kindergarten for eternity. You, ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint to you a kingdom as my Father has appointed unto me that ye may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom and set on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Luke 22, 28 through 30. Now remember when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper during his ministry before Pentecost, didn't he? The church had baptism, the church had apostles, the church had a treasurer, the church had a clerk, and all of this before the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost where the church was glorified, okay? Now, we have in the church the Lord's Supper. Now, what did Jesus say to that church there that last night? You remember, Sharon? What did he say? He said, take eat and take drink, for I will not what? Until I, I will not take it with you. Again. Again, until I take it. Until I come into my kingdom. Okay. That's what it did. Now, we have the Lord's Supper in churches. We practice the Lord's Supper in churches. And we should practice it at supper time. <laughs> really. The Lord's Supper, Jesus is going to... That was pre-used and what we call God's sample case of what would happen in the millennium. Every Jew today, when they have the Hasador, Roger, they say, next year in Jerusalem when they finish. Jesus took Elijah's cup and Elijah's bread and he broke it. And he broke the bread and said, eat, take eat, this is my body. Now the Catholics say, see there, it really Jesus, this is really Jesus' body and, and it's efficacious. It's a vehicle of grace. The Lord's Supper is not a vehicle of grace. Baptism is not a vehicle of grace. The Lord's Supper is a memorial, not transubstantiation, not a vehicle of grace. It is not, it's communion not that it saves you or gives you any great benefit, so to speak. 
You are worshiping God and taking it. That's it. Do this and what? Amen. To get a blessing? Do this to what? Amen. In remembrance of me. Not to get something, not to attain something, not a vehicle of attaining something, but simply worship and remembrance. On page 131, Alan Atkins says, Still another purpose of the millennial reign may be to prepare his children for eternity. And then he goes on to say, Perhaps another, on page 132, Perhaps another reason for the millennium is to prove that man conclusively that his nature is bad and that he needs a new birth. Tulip. Tulip, total hereditary depravity. Are we depraved? Do we still do the wrong things even after we're saved? Do we do that? God's eternal purpose is to bring man into eternal glory and voluntary service to him. Voluntary service? How could God bring a robot into voluntary service? How could he do that? If he created you to do exactly what you do, how could you voluntarily serve him? He still refuses to be defeated. The millennial served to tell out the woeful tale of man's inherent depravity, total hereditary depravity. Another thing on page 132. Let all the world be assured of the fact of God and his eternal purpose to be glorified in all of his creation. God will retain and get back into his power all things by the grace and the person of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And that's what these religions do away with. Gnosticism, your, your Jehovah Witnesses, they don't believe Jesus is God Almighty. They place him away. They do away with him. What I try to do is teach people so they won't go into these cults and Mormonism and all this kind of stuff. How many, how many times do we lose people into cults? How many Baptist preachers have lost their children in the Mormonism and Jehovah's Witnesses? Because they didn't teach them. You need to teach them these things. Let all the world be assured of the fact that God and His eternal purpose, He's going to bring all things back into harmony with Himself through the works of Jesus Christ. And we need to brag on Jesus every day and tell the world who He is. Then we have the great white throne judgment. He talks about that, the great white throne judgment on page 133. Now let's go back into the book of Revelation again. 20 and verse 1 again. And I saw an angel coming down from heaven having a key of the abyss. That key there means what? A sign of authority of the abyss. And a great chain was in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years and threw him into the abyss and shut and sealed it up over him so that he should not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were completed. After these things, he must be released for a short time. Satan's career is not over when he goes into the sodomous pit. And as many amillennials believe today, Satan is not in the bottomless pit. Many of them believe I'm going to tell you something. I don't know how they can do this, but they talk about a spiritual kingdom that's only in the hearts and the minds of the true believers, which is the church, according to them. I don't believe in this universal church business. I believe in a local, visible, physical New Testament church, and I believe in a family God that contains all of the saved. That's true. But these people believe that... Brother Roger, you've heard this, haven't you? These people believe that the kingdom of God is only in the hearts of the true believers, that it's nothing place else. But the Bible has thousands of scriptures that tell us that we're going to have a millennial reign on this earth. A millennial reign on this earth. Now that millennial reign is going to do all of these things. It's going to prove to mankind that he's totally hereditary depraved. It's going to prepare people for the eternity. It's going to prepare God's people for eternity. Even the bride is being prayer, prepared for the eternities. The bride is being... Who's the bride, brother? brother uh, called ecclesia. His ecclesia. His one's called out his church. Physical bodies of... And these bodies are democratic bodies of assemblies that nobody rules over except Jesus. That's all. 
pure democracy, as what uh, Thomas Jefferson said. He went to a Baptist uh, business meeting on Wednesday night. They always had that for the last thousand years, I guess. He went and attended one. He said that's the purest form of democracy he ever saw in his life. That's what it is. Now, it says he's going to be released for a short time. That short time is right here when he's going to be released from there and he's going to go out and he's going to deceive people after the millennium. We have a little mini age right there where Satan comes out and he deceives people again, doesn't he? What is it, how does he do that? Do these uh, people think that he's going to overcome God? Evidently, he convinces them that, the, and, and what are these nations that he, that he convinces? Who are, what are they named? What are the, what's the battle, this battle? It's called the battle of what? Sharon, do you remember that one? No, now Armageddon's over here. What? Gog and Magog. Now, what are those countries? Who is Gog and Magog today? And don't tell me Russia. Huh? That blew that out. Tushup and Meshach and all of these, who are this? This is... This is the Islamic Empire. This is Turkey. And it's also called what? Armenia. Mm -hmm. Armenia killed millions of Christians one time in the 1920s and 30s. That's where we got all these Armenians up and down the San, the San Joaquin Valley here. And Tulare and Fresno and, and uh, Merced, Modesto and all that. These Armenian farmers. They were Christians that were being killed and run out. Those are the ones that escaped. Millions didn't. Okay, is this doing all right today? We're, yeah, you're getting something out of this? Yeah, this is... And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given to them, and I saw souls of those who had been beheaded for the cause of the testimony of Jesus. Now, this is after the resurrection right here, isn't it? Hmm? This is after this resurrection right here, after the tribulation period. Where did these souls get beheaded? It wasn't during the millennium, was it? This is pre-millennium right here, before the millennium. And these people from the rapture here to here, many of them had died for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And we had two witnesses too, didn't we? And the two witnesses were killed, but God raised them back up. Who are those two witnesses? I don't know. I don't either. I don't know who they are. People can give you about 20 different versions of it, and I just don't know who they are. I don't think it's Elijah and Enoch because they're a type of the rapture. Why would he send them back to be killed again if they're a type of the rapture? That doesn't make sense. It could be Paul. Some people say it's Paul, Zechariah, uh, Daniel, Ezekiel, all kinds of things. Moses. And beheaded because of the testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God. And those who had not worshipped the beast. See, we're back in the tribulation period here. We jumped over here, and we got the thousand-year reign, and then we jumped back before the thousand-year reign. We're going from one side of it to the other. And then a lot of these people that don't believe in the millennium and, or post-millennium, so well, they said don't mean nothing anyway. That's all spiritual. Had I not received the mark upon their forehead and upon their hand, and they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. These tribulation saints are going to reign with Christ, Brother Ray, because that's a special group of people. They're not the bride, but they're a special group because they really bit the dust hard. The rest of the dead did not come to life until a thousand years was completed, and this is the first resurrection. We're all talking about the first resurrection here, period here. And then we're going to have a resurrection here, aren't we? We have judgments, many, and we have resurrections, several, don't we? We have a resurrection here. We had a resurrection here when, when Jesus uh, raised some of the dead when he came forth from the grave. How many? I don't know. But they were resurrected. Anastasia. They came out of the graves. Some people think all of these were resurrected from there to there. I don't know. Some people say some of them were for a special first fruits of the resurrection. Yes, absolutely. Some of them, at least, if not all. And then we're going to have a resurrection right here to come. This is the resurrection of the dead in Christ and the rapture of the church. And who gets resurrected first? 
the dead in Christ, and then and then as they're coming up out of the ground, the church, if we are alive then, we get to see the glory of the resurrection. That's why we're, they resurrect them first. Yes, Brother Ray. Now, I know that the resurrection at the end of the church age is that one resurrection. Now, in between the tribulation period from that to the end of the tribulation. There's another resurrection over here. There's one in that tribulation period. Yeah, and this. And at the end of the tribulation period, those that were killed during the tribulation period are resurrected. Those are the ones under the altar. That's the ones right here. Okay, so that's when they get taken up. Yeah, that's when they get to go up, right there. Here we have the rapture, and then here we have another resurrection of those tribulation saints. And they're going to rule and reign with Christ how many years? One thousand years, so that's talking about the millennium. So the ones that are resurrected are strictly those under the altar, and the ones that survived the tribulation... They're alive in their bodies, and they will go in. Only the saved will go into the tribulation period. And there are terra firma. These are uh, people upon the earth. They are alive, breathing human beings. Okay? I don't want to be part of that. I don't want to have to go through that, because that means I wasn't saved here. <laughs> You know, you got the rapture here. According to some people, you got a rapture here and you got a rapture there. I don't think the rapture here is even possible at all at the end of the week. It just doesn't make sense. Pre-trib and mid-tribulation period. Pre-trib makes sense. Mid-tribulation period may be slightly possible. The post-tribulation rapture is not possible. I don't think so at all. There is a resurrection there, but not a rapture. It's not a rapture. If you raptured all the saved... Who would, who would populate the millennium? Now, you can have people resurrected here, and then you've got three and a half more years of people dying, and you can resurrect some of them. So when you get the idea when they talk about a partial resurrection, yes. is that what that is at the end of the tribulation period? That is the resurrection of the tribulation saints. saints right. Yes, of the tribulation saints. Okay. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Now, all of this is the first resurrection. Here we have another resurrection over here in the great white throne at the end of the millennium. And those people that are resurrected there, now we're going to have a, a what we call a change here. These people in their bodies that are serving the Lord willingly and everything right there, they're going to be changed like, like a rapture, but they're going to be changed from their natural bodies. They'll have glorified bodies, and then they will go live with God forever. And those are the terrestrial saints right here. And then we have these over here that are going to be resurrected that are lost. And they're resurrected, and that's what we call the great white throne judgment. Right. Are you getting some of this together? Is it starting to make sense? Yeah. Blessed and holy is the one who has part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no power. But they will be priests of God and of Christ and rule and will reign with him for a thousand years. That's the thousand year reign. Okay? Now, let's look at one other little subject which we covered slightly Sunday night. How many earths? How many worlds are there? Three. Okay? Three. Three. The world that was, Barashith bara, Elohim et Hashemayim we The earth that was, and the earth that that was destroyed, Genesis 1 and 2, and the earth was re rebuilt, and that rebuilt earth is going to go all the way through here. Okay. The earth was changed in the days of Peleg, wasn't it? We had God water or Pangea, and then God divided the earth and made continents and made oceans. That's one oceans. We have the Pacific, we have the Atlantic, the Mediterranean, the Indian Ocean, etc., etc., etc. That's when all that became. But it's still terra firma that God restored here, okay, and put Adam on. And that earth here will go over here in the millennial reign. There, at that period of time, we're going to have a changed earth. But it's the same earth, isn't it? It's a changed earth. It's, it's going to, there's, the curse is going to be taken away. Was there a curse on the earth here? No, there was no curse here. And the curse became here. The curse is going to be taken away here, but it's the same earth. Same earth. But then at the end of all of this, this eternal land, this eternal earth, the eternal heavens, 
will be without sin or any traces of mankind on it. No trace of mankind. Right here, there's a trace of mankind. Yes, Brother Ray. Hey, you just read a thought, and I want to get this straight. Now, when it talks about in the earth, we'll see the day of its redemption. Yes. When does that take place? The day day of its, the earth is going to be cleansed. It's, but this is the one, earth one, earth two. World one, world two. World three. Earth three. So, that so the earth will not totally be totally redeemed until when? Oh, that's right. oh, the that's eternal right. ages. That's what I understood. The eternal so ages. So that's going into eternity. Yes, that's eternity. Because there won't be any sin. There won't be any any trace of mankind. Because in, in, in eternity future, we're saved by grace and there will be no remembrance of anything else that man ever made. Six is sixed out. Man is sick out, exed out, and only the glory of God. And verse number 7, 20 and verse number 7. And when a thousand years is completed, Satan will be released from his prison. When is this? At the end of the millennium. There's when we have the battle of Gog and Magog. Now, people will disagree with me with that, and that's all right. I may be wrong, but I see the battle of Gog and Magog at the end of of the millennium. Because it tells that. It tells who these guys are. And like I said, Gog and Magog is not in Russia. That's in Armenia, Turkey. And this is Islamic people. This is the people that... Rem there are people that are saved in Islam, aren't they? In Islamic countries. They get to die most of the time today. They will die during this tribulation period, I guarantee you. Right there. And gather them from war, and a number of them is like the sand of the seashore. A lot of people uh, were raised in the uh, millennium. Women could have a hundred children, maybe a thousand children at that time. Easily. And they came up on the broad plain of the earth. Now, the earth has been changed already. It? It, it's, not, it's the same earth, but the earth has changed. The, that battlefield is out there. Jerusalem had to be changed, didn't it? To incorporate that new city. Ezekiel's temple, it had to be changed to, to take that. The whole topography had to be changed. But it's the same earth, isn't it? The rocks are still there. The remains of those people are there. The remains of the tombs and everything, that's all there. Maybe the, the Great Pyramid, maybe the Sphinx is still there. But I'll tell you what, in the eternal age, all that's going to be is turned to rubble and totally refined, and God is going to totally erase all of mankind's whole occupation of the earth. And they came up to the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints. And the beloved city, what city is that? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And fire came down of heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet already are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. O Lob. Ace Tony on Tony on. And then we have in verse 11. You had about enough of the seat. You you want a little bit more? Or okay. You want to quit? You all right, Roger? Mm -hmm. You okay? You're still alive in here in 100 degrees? <laughs> well, I'm not wearing a coat today. I'm melting already. And I saw a great white throne, and him was sat upon it, and from whose presence the earth and the heaven fled away, and no place was found to them, and I saw the dead, the great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened, and another book was opened which is the book of life, and all the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. These are the ones that are you're judged according to your deeds if you don't have Christ. You're not judged according to your deeds if you have Christ. Do you understand that? You are judged for your rewards. Right. These people are judged so where they will spend in this eternal hell fire. And that's various degrees of hell. And there we have degrees in hell, we have degrees in heaven, we have degrees in hell. And the sea gave up the dead which was in, in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which was in them, and they were judged, every one of them, according to their deeds. And death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. Death and Hades, this is the end of Hades. 
Now, a lot of people try to say that this is the end of, this is the annihilation of all humans, that they go to sleep and they never wake up. But that's not what the Bible says, is it? Death. And they say this death here is the death, sleep of death, the eternal sleep. This is the second death in the lake of fire. If anyone's name was not written, found written in the book of life, was thrown into the lake of fire. When was that book of life written, Sharon? Eternity. In eternity past. But in space and time, we affirm what's written in that book of life, don't we? Any questions? Any questions? Brother Roger, you got a question? No, sure. Did you learn something today? I'm learning. You're learning. How about Sharon? You got a question? Just, it stretches my mind. Yeah, I, I want to make you think. How about it, Carol? You got a question? <laughs> brother Ray. <laughs> you got a question, brother? Do I have a question? Uh-huh. Did you learn something today? Well, I learned like three things uh, uh, as far as chronologically putting it together. Yes. Okay. And you said you mentioned something about there's going to be a judgment that you have no reference to sin is going to be the day of the reward. Yes. The, the, the rewards were judged. Children of God are judged for what they did and were rewarded for what we did and on what ground we did it. The, the, the lost people are judged on how good or bad they were. There are good people going to be in hell. Did you know that? There are good people going to be in hell. There are. There are religious people that are going to be in hell. And a lot of religious people. Hell is going to be full of religion. I can tell you that right, right now. Except there will only be one religion left. And they will really believe who Jesus is. There will be no doubt about who Jesus is then. Kind of the idea, I said, well, some people think, well, hopefully you're good or outweigh your bad. But even in that, oh, yeah. it's going to happen in hell, but not enough to get you out of it. No, you're there. Who wants to go to hell? A less spot or place, you know? I've heard people say, I don't want to go to heaven. I won't have any friends there. there nobody's got any friends in hell. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's all misery. Well, I had a boy in there, a guy named Richie Boy. Yeah. Yes, he hell became a reality to him. But you did tell him, didn't you? I did. You were a gangster with him mm -hmm. at one time, and you started trying to reach some of these. Some of those gangsters were too dangerous to reach, weren't they, Brother? Brother, you, you the tried to leave them alone. Those are the ones kill you. Oh, yeah. Now you leave them alone. Just just walk off and leave them where they are. Yeah. Just leave them where they are. Can I have a yes. Because he had an eternal purpose that shows that without the leading of Satan, man will go bad. And with the leading of Satan, he will still go bad. And no matter what kind of information you have, if you live through the millennial reign, just think, people saw Jesus, they saw his church, they saw David, and still they're going to go away? You can just put stupid right over their foreheads on every one of them. Because... The facts are there, but what was in that rebellion? It was a rebellion of mankind against God, and they'll choose Satan every time. Man will choose Satan every time to be his partner. So he has to be judged. Satan's got to be judged. Uh, Satan is definitely going to be judged, but all those that follow Satan will be judged also. Are you on God's side or Satan's side today? Yeah. You're on God's side or Satan's side? Well, if you're not saved, you're on Satan's side. If you're in the decision, you're on Satan's side. You're not your own. And this goes out all over the world. We just This was a production studio here. So now we go out there. Jesus died for your sins. That's a fact. 
Jesus is God the Son, the eternal Jehovah of the Bible, and he became flesh and dwelt among us so he could redeem us from our sins, that he could save us from our sins. He is the eternal God of the Old Testament. He did die on the cross of Calvary for a propitiation for every man's sins that would ever be born in the world. Jesus Christ died for all men. His blood does not cover all men, but it's, it is sufficient to cover all men. It only covers those that believe. And if you're out there and you don't believe in Jesus, even though you're listening to this religious class, give it up. Come to Jesus. He did it all. Jesus is your God. He is your God. He's the only God that you're ever going to know. He is not the Father a lot of people just want to worship the Father. You better worship the Son. You better kiss the Son lest He be what? Angry. All right. Our Heavenly Father, we come to You. We put these words out there for the world to hear. Let them glorify You. Help us to glorify You this hot day. Forgive us for your failure, Father. Let Your Word go on and on and on. Let people that are lost be convicted of sin, righteous, and judgment to come. Those that are saved, convict them to serve you and not their fancies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.